plainly Parseval's identity. Okay, this is from the fifth unit, Fourier transform. Now, uh, this is a really, really important topic, okay, in this unit. So I'm sure this is going to be really useful for you. All right. Um, so let's go ahead. Now, before we actually see what is Parseval's identity and the problems using uh, Parseval's identity, we need to recall certain uh, concepts, certain definitions, certain formulae. So let's do that first. Okay, let's do the recapping. All right. So now to start with, you need to know what is an odd function, what is an even function, okay? So this is basically a definition, which I'm sure you all know because you've done this in your previous semester, all right? Now, um, so when do you call a function f of x to be even? When f of minus x is the same as f of x, okay? This is the mathematical definition of an even function. Now, very famous, I mean, commonly, uh, common uh, even functions are x squared, x power four, x power six, cos x, mod x, these are all even functions. Now, how do I decide whether a function is even or not? All I have to do is check whether the definition holds. So let's take x squared. Look at the right-hand side where I've highlighted. If you take x squared, how do you check whether x squared is even or odd? Consider f of minus x. Now, what will my f of minus x be? Minus x, the whole square, which is the same as x squared. And x squared is nothing but f of x, right? So what have we got? f of minus x equal to f of x. Therefore, what can you call x squared to be an even function? Okay. Now, in fact, any even power of x is an even function. Okay. x power 8, x power 10. These are all even functions. Remember, cos x is also even because what is cos of minus x? It's the same as cos x, isn't it? Cos of minus theta is cos theta. So cos of minus x is the same as cos x and therefore cos x is also an even function. Okay. All right. When do you call a function to be odd? If f of minus x is the same as minus f of x, okay? So x, x cubed, x power 5, x power 7, in fact, any odd power of x is an odd function, okay? Other examples are sine x, tan x, etc. okay? Now, how do you check f of x equal to x cubed is odd? Consider f of minus x. Look at the highlighted, yellow highlighted portion in the right hand side. Consider f of minus x. So what would that be? Minus x, the whole cube. And what is minus x, the whole cube? It is minus of x cube, which is the same as minus of f of x. Okay. So since f of minus x is the same as minus f of x, what can you call x cube to be? An odd function. Okay. So remember, any odd power of x is an odd function. Any even power of x is an even function. Okay. Now, this is a very important note that I've written in highlighted, uh, I've highlighted in yellow. So I want you to go through that. It says any even function when multiplied with even function gives you even function again. Okay. Similarly, odd into odd gives you even again. Okay. But odd into even or even into odd always gives you an odd function. So I want you to remember this note. Okay, we'll be using this in problems. Now, if you want to remember this easily, you know, you can, you can, um, uh, you can connect even to plus and odd to minus. Okay, what is plus into plus? Plus only. And what is minus into minus? Plus, isn't it? So I want you to think like this. Even corresponds to plus, odd corresponds to minus. Then you can easily remember this note. Okay, so plus into plus is plus, minus into minus is plus and minus into plus is minus, okay? So just for you to remember, it may not be logically right, but just for you to remember, remember, think of even function as plus, an odd function as minus, you can easily remember, all right? Okay, let's move ahead to the next slide. Okay, this is property of definite integrals. This again, you would have done in your last semester. Okay, this talks about odd and even function again. So when a function is even, what is integral minus a to plus a of an even function? It is twice zero to a, okay? So minus a to plus a of any even function is twice zero to a, fine? Similarly, whenever a function is odd, what is my integral minus a to plus a of any odd function? It is always zero. This is a very, very important property that you have to remember, okay? So let's just say that quickly again. Integral minus a to plus a of an even function is twice integral zero to a. And integral minus a to plus a of an odd function is always zero. Okay, please remember this. All right. 
Now, thirdly, we're going to look at a formula. Now, this formula may be new for some of you, <clears throat> but you know what? This is just an extension of integration by parts. Okay? Now, you all know integration by parts, right? What is the integral u dv? It is uv minus u dash v1 plus u double dash v2 minus u triple dash. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is Bernoulli's formula that I'm stating. What is integration by parts? Integral u dv is uv minus integral v du. Now, this you all know, right? Now, Bernoulli's formula is just an extension of that integration by parts. Okay? Now, uh, see, if you, if you have to evaluate integral, say, x square into cos x dx, and if you're going to go for integration by parts, you will have to use integration by parts twice to evaluate that integral. Whereas Bernoulli's formula gives you the answer in one step. So this is definitely better. Okay. Supposing you want to integrate x power 10 into cos x dx, you have to use integration by parts 10 times to get the answer. Okay. Whereas if you use Bernoulli's, you get the answer in one step. So this is definitely an easy formula to learn as well. Okay. So I want you to learn this. Let's see what it is. What is the integral u dv? It is uv minus u dash v1 plus u double dash v2 minus u triple dash v3 plus etc. Okay, so where, what do the dashes denote? They denote differentiation and the suffixes denote integration. So what does that mean? u dash is the differentiation of u. u double dash is the differentiation of u dash. u triple dash is the differentiation of u double dash and so on. Okay. Similarly, what is this V1? V1 is the integral of V. What is V2? V2 is the integral of V1. What is V3? V3 is the integral of V2. Okay, so the suffixes denote integration. The dashes denote differentiation. All right. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. All right. Now, this is what we're going to see today. Okay, we're going to see Parseval's identity. It's a very important topic. Now, Parseval's identity is actually derived using a theorem called convolution theorem. The convolution theorem is a very famous part a question. The statement you have to remember by heart. Okay, so let's just quickly go through the statement alone. So I have two functions with me. Okay, f of x, g of x. All right, now you know what convolution is. It's basically an operation on two functions, f of x and g of x. Now what does convolution theorem state? It states Fourier transform of, look at the highlighted yellow part, Fourier transform of, f of x convolution g of x is equal to Fourier transform of f of x into Fourier transform of g of x. It's a very easy statement. Remember it by heart. It will be useful for parting. Okay. And another important reason is this theorem is used to derive Parseval's identity. All right. Okay. So what's convolution theorem? Fourier transform of f of x convolution g of x is equal to Fourier transform of f of x into Fourier transform of g of x. All right. Okay. Now we come to the most important part, which is Parseval's identity for Fourier transform. Let's have a look at the statement. What does it say? It says integral minus infinity to plus infinity modulus of f of x square dx is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity modulus of f of s square ds. Okay. Left hand side, the variable is x. Right inside the variable is yes. Please note. Okay. Well, what is this f of s? f of s is nothing but Fourier transform of f of x. So you've got to get this into your mind. This is really important. f of s is a notation which is used to represent Fourier transform of f of x. Okay. Please remember this. Okay. All right. Now this is possible identity. And why do we have minus infinity to plus infinity? f of x is defined in that region. f of x is defined in minus infinity to plus infinity. That's why we have that interval here. Fine. Now, so will you remember this? This, this is really important. Okay. Integral minus infinity to plus infinity. Modulus of f of x squared dx is the same as integral minus infinity to plus infinity. Modulus of f of s squared ds. Okay. Where what is f of s? It's the Fourier transform of f of x. Fine. Now, where do we use this? This identity is mainly used for deductions. Okay. So many a times you'll be asked to find the Fourier transform of a function. And then the question will say, hence deduce. So you have to prove a result from the Fourier transform that you found. So that is where Parseval's identity is used. Okay. So please remember, Parseval's identity is used only for deductions when you have to prove a result. Okay. All right. 
Now, before we go to the problems using Parcel's identity, I want you to recollect some basic definitions which you're supposed to know, okay? Now, we are talking about Fourier transform here. So obviously you need to know what is Fourier transform, right? Okay, so let's look at the definition. This is the basic definition. Let f of x be defined in minus infinity to plus infinity. Then what is the Fourier transform of f of x? It is denoted as f of f of x. And what is it by definition? It is one by root of two pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of x into e power i s x dx. This definition, you have to remember it by heart. Take it as a formula. Okay, it's the definition. Now, how is this written as, if this is the same as f of s? I already told you, remember, for your transform of f of x is the same as f of s. Okay, all right. Now we have, something called inversion formula for Fourier transform. This is again very useful, again used for deductions, okay? So let's have a look at it. What's inversion formula? F of x is equal to one by root of two pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity Fourier transform of F of x e power minus isx ds. So this is the second formula that you have to remember. Okay, so if you look at the definition of Fourier transform and the inversion formula, both the highlighted parts, what is the difference? In the inversion formula, f of, f of x and f of x are interchanged. Did you note that? From the main formula, just interchange f of x and f of f of x, you get the inversion formula. What other differences do you see? In the main definition, you have e power plus isx. In the inversion formula, you have e power minus isx. And remember here it is ds. So what's the variable in inversion formula? Yes is the variable because it says d s. Okay, all right. So these two I want you to remember and also remember inversion formula is again used for deductions. Okay, so what have I told you so far? I said for deductions, there are two things that we're going to use. One is inversion formula. The other is Parseval's identity, which we saw in the previous slide. Okay, so these two you have to remember by heart apart from the definition of Fourier transform that I've given you, okay? So these are the three formulae that you have to remember. Okay, let's proceed. Now, we have, we're going to see three problems today, okay? Three problems and I'll wind up with those three problems. All the three are very, very important problems. So please listen attentively. And before we go on to the problems, there's, there are certain concepts that you have to understand, okay? So I thought I'll first look at that and then go on to problems, okay? All right, only two concepts. Now the first one talks about the definition of modulus of x. Now what is modulus of x by definition? It takes the value x if x is greater than zero. It takes the value minus x if x is less than zero, okay? Now I've just explained this definition in example, as, I mean, giving two examples here. Just look at the examples. What is modulus of six? You know, modulus of six is six because six is positive. You write it as it is, right? So that's how you get the first case. Modulus of x is x only if x is greater than zero, okay? Now look at the other example. What is modulus of minus 10? It is minus of minus 10. Why are you doing this? To make it positive, isn't it? You know modulus of minus 10 is 10. How are you doing that? You make it positive by multiplying by a minus sign. So that's the second case in the highlighted definition. Modulus of x is minus of x if x is less than zero if x is negative, okay? So this is one definition that I want you to remember, which we will apply in problems, okay? All right. Now, the second concept that you have to know, this is really important, okay? So I want you to listen to this carefully. All right, now we're going to see what modulus of x less than or equal to a means and what modulus of x greater than a means, okay? We're going to see what, what region do they stand for? What region do they stand for, okay? So let's take the first one. What is modulus of x less than or equal to a? Okay, look at the left side now. Please concentrate on the left side. Modulus of x less than or equal to a means x is less than or equal to a and minus x is less than or equal to a, isn't it? Now have x is less than or equal to a as it is. I put it in a box. Take minus x less than or equal to a. Multiply both sides by minus sign. What will you get? X, when you multiply both sides by minus sign, the inequality changes. Less than or equal to becomes greater than or equal to. Okay, so x is greater than or equal to minus a. Now, that is the same as saying minus a is less than or equal to x, isn't it? Now, look at the two boxes that I've marked in the left-hand side. I want you to combine these two. 
minus a is less than or equal to x and x is less than or equal to a. So when you combine these two, what will you get? Minus a less than or equal to x less than or equal to a. Look at the highlighted yellow part. That's the region you will get. Okay. So in other words, modulus of x less than or equal to a means x lies between minus a to plus a. Please remember this. It's very, very important. Okay. So modulus of x less than or equal to a means, means what region? Minus a to plus a. Okay. It stands for the region minus a to plus a. All right. Now let's look at the right hand side. Let's look at what modulus of x greater than a means. All right. The modulus of x greater than a means x is greater than a and minus x is greater than a. Right. Okay. Now, what does x greater than a mean? x greater than a means the full portion from a to infinity. Isn't it? All values of x greater than a. So what does it mean? It means x lies between a to infinity. That's the second equation. Now I've taken the other one. What's the other part? Minus x greater than a. So what does that mean? Minus x greater than a means multiply both sides by minus sign. X is less than minus a. Okay. Now if x is less than minus a, what does it mean? Think of all the values of x which is less than minus a. It means what portion? From minus infinity to minus a. All values of x less than minus a means to the left of minus a. So it will be from minus infinity to minus a. Okay, so the second, second one mod x greater than a stands for what region? It stands for the region a to infinity and minus infinity to minus a. It stands for two regions. Okay, so let me make myself clear. The first region modulus of x less than or equal to a stands for minus a to plus a. Okay, the other region modulus of x greater than a stands for the remaining portion. What's the remaining portion apart from minus a to plus a? It is minus infinity to minus a and a to infinity. So this is what I've clearly explained in the diagram. Please look at the diagram, all of you. I've marked the entire real line, okay? Minus infinity to plus infinity because that is where our function is defined. Now, zero obviously will be the middle point. Where will minus a and plus a be? To the left of zero is minus a, to the right of zero is plus a, okay? Now, minus a to plus a is what region? It stands for the region modulus of x less than or equal to a, okay? And look at the remaining portion. To the left is minus infinity to minus a. To the right is a to infinity. Both are marked in blue. You understand? So both those regions put together will make modulus of x greater than a. Have you understood? See, look at equations 2 and 3. 2 and 3 together give you mod x greater than a. So that is what I've explained in the diagram. Okay? Minus infinity to minus a is equation 3. a to infinity is equation 2. Both these regions together give you mod x greater than a. Okay? And the middle portion, minus a to plus a, gives you mod x less than or equal to a. Okay? So I've clearly again explained it with a tabular, you know, column in the yellow highlighted part. I hope this is very clear. Students, this is really important. I want you to understand this concept very well. Only then you can do any problem here. All right? So I hope this is clear. So what is modulus of x less than or equal to a? It means minus a to plus a. What is mod x greater than a? It's the remaining portion. Minus infinity to minus a and a to infinity. Okay? All right. Now we will go on to problems. So as I told you, I have three problems lined up for you. All the three are very, very, very important. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Now, the question says, find the Fourier transform of f of x equal to 1 if mod x is less than or equal to a, 0 if mod x is greater than a. Okay, and hence evaluate first subdivision integral 0 to infinity sin t by t dt. Second subdivision integral 0 to infinity sin t by t the whole square dt. So we have two deductions here. One is integral sin t by t. The other one is integral sin t by t the whole square. So for deductions, what should you use? Inversion formula, Parseval's identity. Okay, so we will come to deductions later. Let's look at the first part of the question first. What, what are you asked to do first? First, you're asked to find the Fourier transform of f of x. So let's find that first. Then go on to deductions. Okay, all right. So I've explained clearly in the solution. Look at the first line in the solution. Here, what is f of x? You should tell me now. Just now we saw the previous page. You remember this? I'm, I've used that here. 
So what is f of x? It takes the value 1 when x lies between minus a to plus a. Isn't it? What is mod x less than or equal to a? It stands for minus a to plus a. Okay? Now, f of x is 0 if mod x is greater than a. That's what is given in the question. What is mod x greater than a? It's nothing but minus infinity to minus a and a to infinity. Okay? So, have you understood the definition of f of x? f of x takes the value 1 when x lies between minus a to plus a. It takes the value 0 from minus infinity to minus a and a to infinity. Is this definition clear? Okay. Now, what is our aim? What is our objective? We are supposed to find the Fourier transform of this function. Okay. Now, let's begin with the definition of Fourier transform. By definition, what is Fourier transform of f of x equal to? We saw that earlier. Remember, 1 by root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of x into e power i s x dx. This is what it is by definition. Okay. All right. Now, all I have to do is integrate this. Now, before that, I have to substitute for f of x, right? Can I substitute for f of x straight away? I can't because it, two, it takes two different values. It takes one in one region. It takes zero in, in two other regions. So what should I do first? I should split zero, minus infinity to plus infinity. First, I should split minus infinity to plus infinity as minus infinity to minus a plus minus a to a plus a to infinity. Can you understand why I'm doing that? Because f of x takes different values in different regions. So according to the definition, according to the definition, I have split minus infinity to plus infinity as minus infinity to minus a, minus a to a, and then a to infinity. Okay. Now, listen carefully. The first integral and the last integral become zero. Why? Because when x lies between minus infinity to minus a, and when x lies between a to infinity, third integral, where are you? You're in the second line. Where, what is the value of f of x? It is zero. That is how the function is defined. Do you understand? f of x is zero from minus infinity to minus a and from a to infinity. So I will substitute zero there. And what is the integral of zero? Zero, right? So the first integral and the last integral becomes zero. They vanish. So I'm left with only the middle integral, all right? So, what is the value of f of x there from minus a to plus a? Look at the first line of the definition of f of x. Minus a to plus a or in the first line. Where what is the value of f of x there? It takes the value 1. Okay. So, <clears throat> the last step is 1 by root of 2 pi integral minus a to plus a. f of x takes the value 1 there. e power i is x dx. Have you understood so far? Okay. Now, I have to integrate this. <clears throat> now, I can do it in two ways. Okay. I can integrate it as it is because this is really easy. What is integral of e power i ax? It is e power ax divided by a. So I can simply integrate, substitute the limits, bring it in terms of sign. The other way of integrating this would be to bring e power i as x in terms of sign and cos. Now this is what we do for all problems. So I want you to I want you to follow one standard procedure for all problems. Okay, that will be a lot easier. So that's the method that I'm going to follow. Now, I want you to recollect. What is e power i theta? Let's go to the next slide. What is e power i theta? Look at the highlighted yellow portion in the right hand side. What is e power i theta? You all know it is cos theta plus i sin theta. Isn't it? So, what do I have in the last line? I have e power i s x. Instead of theta, I have s into x. So, what is e power i s x? It is cos s x plus i sin s x. I have simply used this. Replacing theta by s into x. Fine. Now, split this integral into 2. Split it into 2. So, what will you get? Integral minus a to plus a cos s x plus i into integral minus a to plus a sin s x dx. Okay. Now, the first integral. Look at the first integral. What do you know about cos x? It's an even function. We discussed this earlier. Remember? So, what is minus a to plus a of an even function? It is twice 0 to a. Remember that property that we saw? Minus a to plus a of any even function is twice 0 to a. Okay. Now, look at the second integral, the second line, minus sin s x. I have sin s x there. And I know sin is an odd function. Okay. So, what is minus a to plus a of an odd function? It is 0. So, that integral vanishes. So, I have just 1 by root of 2 pi twice 0 to a cos s x dx. Now, integrate cos. What is integral of cos? Sin. So, it is sin s x 
divide by the constant. Please note the variable is x here. So what's the constant here? Yes is the constant. So integral of cos is sin s x divided by s. I divide by the constant between the limit 0 to 8. That gives you root of 2 by pi sin a s by s. So what have we found? We have found the Fourier transform of f of x. Have you understood? First part of the question is over. We found the Fourier transform of f of x, which is denoted as f of s. So what is f of s? Root of 2 by pi sin a s by s. Now I'm going to go on to the deduction. Now please listen to me carefully. There are two deductions. Let's go to the question. There are two deductions. One is integral sin t by t. The other is integral sin t by t, the whole square. Now, I told you for deductions, there are two possibilities. Either you use inversion formula or possibilities. How will you know where you have to use what? For that, listen carefully. Look at the Fourier transform of f of x. Look at the last step. Look at f of s. What do you have there? You have sin a s by s. Forget about the constant. You have sin a s by s. Now, in the deduction, you have sin t by t. The first deduction has sin t by t. And I have sin a s by s. It's exactly the same. Instead of yes, I have t, right? So which formula will you use for the first deduction? You will simply use inversion formula. Do you understand? If you have f of s in the integral, simply use the inversion formula for that deduction. Now look at the next deduction. You have sin t by t, the whole square, isn't it? Whereas in f of s, you have only sin a s by s. But in the deduction, you have the whole square. Now, which identity gives you, talks about whole square? Parsimal's identity, isn't it? You remember Parsimal's identity uh, statement? Integral minus infinity to plus infinity, f of x squared dx is the same as integral minus infinity to plus infinity, f of s squared ds. So I have f of s here. So Parsimal's identity will give me f of s squared. So it will give me sin as by s the whole square. Do you understand? So that's how you identify. So for the first subdivision, I will simply use inversion formula. For the second subdivision, since I have whole square, I will use Parseval's identity. Once you identify that, it's going to be really easy. Okay, let's go to the first one, first deduction. So as I told you, to prove the first one, what are we going to do? Simply use inversion formula. Now, what is inversion formula for Fourier transform? It is f of x equal to, this formula you have to know by heart, f of x equal to 1 by root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity, f of f of x, e power minus isx, ds. Inversion formula has ds. So yes is the variable. Okay. Now all we have to do is substitute and simplify. You will automatically get the value of integral sine t by t. Let's see how we do it. Okay. So what is this equal to 1 by root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity? Look at the second line. I've substituted for f of f of x. You know what is Fourier transform of f of x, right? Just now we found it is root of 2 by pi sin a s by s. I substituted for Fourier transform of f of x into e power minus i s x d s. Okay. Now, what is e power minus i s x? You know what is e power minus i theta? Look in the brackets. What is e power minus i theta? It is cos theta minus i sin theta. So what is e power minus i s x? It is cos s x minus i sin s x d s. Okay, now in this next step, what have I done? I have multiplied term by term. Okay, term by term I have multiplied. So I'll get sin a s by s into cos s x minus i into i is just a constant. Integral sin a s by s into sin s x d s. Okay, have you understood? I split it into two, multiplying term by term. Now, I have limits of, are of what form? Minus a to plus a. Isn't it? Because minus infinity to plus infinity is of the form minus a to plus a. So I can use property of definite integrals here. So I'm going to check whether the function is odd or even. Okay. Look at the first integral. It is odd into, see sin a s is odd. 1 by s is odd. 1 by s is very similar to x. Okay. You know x is odd, right? So 1 by s is odd. Sin a s is odd. Cos is an even function. So odd into odd into even. What is that? Even into even, which is even. So the first integral is an even function for the first integral. Now look at the second integral. Sine is odd. 1 by s is odd. Again, sine is odd. So odd into odd into odd gives you even into odd, which is again odd. Okay. So I know integral minus infinity to plus infinity of an odd function is zero. That will vanish. So only the first will exist. And I have it to be an even function. 
So how can I write minus infinity to plus infinity as twice zero to infinity? So I've applied property of definite integrals there. Okay. Now listen carefully. Don't don't forget the objective. What are you supposed to find? Integral sine t by t. Okay. Now look at the last step here. Please look at the last step here. Remember, yes is the variable. Okay. Yes is the variable. Now I have to find integral sine t by t. So I don't need that cos s x. That cos s x I don't want because I have to find integral sine t by t. So what should I do? Yes is the variable. I can give value for x because x is only a constant here. So what can I do? How do I make that cos s x vanish? How do I make it disappear? By putting x equal to zero. Do you understand why I'm doing that? I'm going to put x as zero because I know cos zero is one and that will vanish. I don't want it because I'm asked to find integral sine t by t. So that's my next step. I'm going to put x as zero. Okay, I, what I've done is I've brought this two by pi to the other side. Okay, so integral zero to infinity sine a s by s cos s x dx ds will be pi by two into f of x. Now I have put x equal to zero. Okay, so left hand side cos zero is one. You know that. Right hand side it will become pi by two into f of zero. Now how do I find f of zero? I have to look at the definition of f of x. Now you know. By definition, it says in the question itself, f of x takes the value one from minus a to plus a, isn't it? Now, where will zero be? Where will zero be? X equal to zero. It will be in this range from minus a to plus a, isn't it? So, what is f of x there from minus a to plus a? F of x takes the value one, right? Now, since zero belongs to this range, what will be f of zero? One. Okay. So I've substituted for f of zero as one. So this is what I have. Now what have, what should we find? We should find integral sine t by t, right? So I don't need that a here in the left hand side. So what will I do? I will put a equal to one. Okay. So put a equal to one. I get integral zero to infinity sine s by s ds equal to pi by two. Okay. But what do we need? We need sine t by t. That's what the question says. So simply replace s by t. Now that is perfectly allowed, isn't it? Simply replace s by t. Uh, I hope you understand the last step. I see yes here is only a dummy variable. By property of definite integrals, integral a to b f of x dx is the same as integral a to b f of y dy. So the variable here does not have any value. Okay. So simply replace yes by t. That gives you the answer. That give that gives you pi by two. So the first integral value is pi by two. And how did we find it? Using inversion formula. Okay. Now. What is the second result that you have to prove? Look at the question. Second result you have to prove integral sine t by t the whole square, right? You need whole square. And my Fourier transform only has sine s by s. So only when I square f of s, I will get that result. Now, which result gives you f of s square? Only Parseval's identity. That is why I'm going to use Parseval's identity to derive the second result. Okay. So let's go to the second deduction. Okay. Again, simply state possible identity, substitute, simplify, you will get the value automatically. So let's see how we do it. What is possible identity for Fourier transform? Integral minus infinity to plus infinity mod f of x squared dx is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity mod f of x squared ds. Okay. Now, this is the statement. Now, what should I do to the left hand side? I know f of x takes 0 and 1 in different intervals. So that is why left hand side I've split minus infinity to plus infinity as minus infinity to minus a plus minus a to a plus a to infinity. Left hand side I've split it like that because f of x takes 1 and 0 in different intervals. Okay. Now right hand side I've simply substituted. Right hand side I have integral minus infinity to plus infinity. What is f of s? Just now we found f of s. What is f of s? Fourier transform of f of x. I've just substituted root of 2 by pi sine a s by s the whole square ds. Okay, now look at the left hand side. The first integral and the last integral becomes zero because f of x is zero there. We already discussed this, remember? Okay, now look at the middle integral. What is the value of f of x in the middle integral from minus a to plus a? It takes the value one. So I have integral minus a to plus a, one, one square dx equal to two by pi into, see what is sine a s by s the whole square? It is sine square a s by s square ds. Okay, have you understood so far? Now, 
we are very we have come in, we have come very close to the answer okay see we, we are asked to find integral sin t by t integral 0 to infinity sin t by t the whole square now we have already al almost got it except that i have an a there i don't want that a so what should i do put a equal to 1 okay see yes is the variable you cannot give value for yes but you can give value for a because a is just a constant okay so i put a equal to 1 so what do I have? Integral minus 1 to plus 1 dx is equal to 2 by pi into integral minus infinity to plus infinity of the right hand side. So I will wait till that uh, till your feedback is over and then we will continue. All right. So I guess the, your feedback is over. Let's continue with what we're doing. Okay. So we've come to the end. All right. See, look at the last step. What did I do? I put a equal to one because I didn't want that a and a is just a constant. I can give value for a. So when I put a equal to one, this is what I get. So left hand side, I integrate it. Okay. Now look at the right hand side. See, in the question, if you know what, you're asked to find. In the question, if you know what, you're asked to find integral. Look at the second second uh, subdivision. We're asked to find integral 0 to infinity. So what do I have here? I have integral minus infinity to plus infinity. So how do I make it as 0 to infinity? I know this is an even function. See, sine sin square is even because sine is odd, right? Odd into odd is even. Sine square is even. T square is also even. So it's an even function. Therefore, how can you write minus infinity to plus infinity as twice 0 to infinity? Because it's an even function. Okay? That's it. So what is the integral zero to infinity sine t by t the whole square dt that is equal to bring everything to the other side you get pi by two. Okay, so the value of this integral is also pi by two and this we found using particles. All right, so deductions, please remember there are two options that you have. Either you can use inversion formula or particles identity. When will you use inversion formula? If in the integral, you have the same function that you have in Fourier transform of f of x, you go for inversion formula. Okay, when will we go for passivals? If you have to find square of the Fourier transform, if you have to find square of f of s, then you use passivals identity. Very, very easy. So judge properly and then go for it. Okay, all right. Now we'll, let's go, go ahead. Let's go, go on to the second problem. We have two more problems to be done. So let's do this quickly. All the three are very important problems. Okay, so concentrate. Now, second question is find the Fourier transform of f of x equal to 1 minus mod x for mod x less than 1, 0 for mod x greater than or equal to 1. Now you tell me, mod x less than 1 means what? Minus 1 to plus 1. Isn't it? Instead of a, you have 1. That is all. What does mod x less than 1 stand for? What, are, what reason does it stand for? Minus 1 to plus 1. Now look at the next, next case. f of x takes the value 0 for mod x greater than or equal to 1. Now what is mod x greater than or equal to 1? The remaining portion minus infinity to minus 1 and 1 to infinity. Do you understand? Mod x less than 1 is minus 1 to plus 1. Mod x greater than or equal to 1 would be the remaining portion. Minus infinity to minus 1 and 1 to infinity. Okay? All right. One more definition that we already saw. Look at this mod x. We already saw the definition. I hope you remember. What is mod x? It is x if x is greater than 0. If x is positive. It is minus x if x is negative. x is less than 0. Okay, let's go ahead. Now, as usual, see here we have one only one deduction. 
only one deduction but before that what should you find you're asked to find the fourier transform of f of x so let's do that first let's find the fourier transform of f of x so what is f of f of x equal to by definition it is 1 by root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of x into e power i is x dx by definition okay remember this by heart now how should you split minus infinity to plus infinity as minus infinity to minus 1 plus minus 1 to plus 1 plus 1 to infinity so that is exactly what i have done because this is how f of x is defined okay so i have split it now look at the definition look at the last line from minus 1 to plus 1 what is the value of f of x 1 minus mod x okay and what is the value of f of x from minus infinity to minus 1 and 1 to infinity it is zero so that is what i have done here in the second step f of x is zero for the first integral f of x is zero for the last integral an integral of zero is zero so the first integral and last integral vanish i have only the middle integral okay and what is the value of f of x there from minus 1 to plus 1 it is 1 minus mod x so that's what i've substituted so it is integral minus 1 to plus 1 1 minus mod x into e power i s x dx okay now as usual what did we do for the previous problem i hope you remember what should you do with e power i s x write it as cos s x plus i sin s x how did i get this because i know e power i theta is cos theta plus i sin theta right so using that next what should you do split it into two integrals okay so i will get the first integral as 1 minus mod x into cos plus i into 1 minus mod x into sin okay now i am going to see which is odd which is even i can use property of definite integrals here because look at the limits limits are minus 1 to plus 1 1 what form is this minus a to plus a okay so i can use property here so let's check what is 1 minus mod x we already saw mod x is even function so even cos is also even so even into even gives me even now look at the second integral i know 1 minus mod x is even but sin is odd so what is even into odd it is odd so integral minus 1 to plus 1 of an odd function becomes zero the second one vanishes i have only the first one and what happens to the first integral because it's an even function it becomes twice zero to one okay so that's the next step twice 0 to 1 let's go to the next slide so 1 by root of 2 pi twice 0 to 1 1 minus mod x cos sx dx okay now listen carefully to what i'm saying now i have to integrate this i cannot simplify this further i have to integrate now i don't know integral of mod x so what should i do first i should write mod x as bring it in terms of x how do i do that listen carefully to this step look at the second line that i have underlined note that very carefully where does x range from look at the limits x ranges from 0 to 1 what does that mean x is positive x is greater than 0 if x is greater than 0 what is modulus of x it is x have you understood this because x is greater than 0 modulus of x can be replaced by x so what will i get now root of 2 by pi integral 0 to 1 1 minus x into cos sx dx okay and this i can integrate easily using bernoulli's formula okay so i want you to get used to bernoulli's formula because you will be using this in your next semesters okay all right so again as usual how do you choose u according to i late okay so uh, a comes first algebraic function uh, uh, function comes first before trigonometric so i choose 1 minus x as u the remaining automatically becomes dv now what is bernoulli's formula look at the highlighted yellow bernoulli's formula says integral u dv is u into v minus u dash into v1 plus u double dash into v2 minus etc i have simply used that formula here okay so what is u now 1 minus x what is u dash the u dash stands for du by dx differentiation of u with respect to x so what is that minus 1 now what is u double dash differential of u dash and minus 1 is a constant when you differentiate that you will get zero and because u double dash is zero u triple dash everything else is going to be zero so i'm going to stop with u dash now look in the formula for, look at look at bernoulli's formula it is uv minus u dash v1 that is all the next terms i will not get because i know u double dash is zero because u double dash is zero u triple dash all other terms are going to be zero so i have only two terms uv minus u dash v1 for my problem okay so i need to find only v and v1 how will i find that from dv how will you find v 
you'll have to integrate. What is the integral of cos sx? It is sin sx divided by s. You divide by the constant because you are integrating. Okay? Now, next find v1. What is v1? v1 is integral of v. What is the integral of sin sx by s? It is integral of sin is minus cos. So, minus cos sx divided by s into the s that you already have gives you s squared. Have you understood? Now, all you have to do is use the formula. So, what is Fourier transform of f of x? It is root of 2 by pi into u into v. See, I've marked crosswise u into v minus u dash into v1. So, that's how I get that step. Now, the first term, now you have to simply substitute the limits. I'm sure you can manage this. The first term becomes 0 for both the upper and the lower limit. That's why I've cancelled it, okay? 1 minus 1 is 0. Sine 0 is 0. So, that term vanishes completely. I've substituted 1 and 0 for the remaining two terms. Okay. So actually, what do I get? I get 1 minus cos s by s square. Last but one step. I have brought it in terms of sine. Now, why did I do that? Because I have a deduction. So if you don't have a deduction, you can simply stop with 1 minus cos, x, cos s by s square. Okay. But because I have a deduction, what deduction do I have? Look at the question. Integral 0 to infinity sine power 40 by t power 4. I have a deduction with sine. So that is why I brought 1 minus cos s in terms of sine. Now look in the last step right inside where I've highlighted. You know 1 minus cos 2 theta is 2 sine square theta. You know that formula, right? So what will 1 minus cos s be? It will be 2 sine square s by 2. Isn't it? 2 theta is becoming theta. So what will s become? S by 2. Have you understood? So that is what I've done. So that's how I get the last step. Root of 2 by pi. 2 sine square s by 2 by s square. And why did I bring it in terms of sine? Because the deduction has sine. Otherwise, you don't have to do it. Okay. Now, let's have a look at the deduction. We're running out of time. So, I'm going to, you know, increase my pace. Please come along with me. All right. So, we have a deduction here. Now, why did I go for Parseval's identity? I have only one deduction. I can use inversion formula or Parseval's. Why did I go for Parseval's? Now, listen carefully. Look at the last step. Fourier transform of f of x, which is f of s, is has sine square by s square. But what do we have in the deduction? In the deduction, we have sine power 4 by t power 4. So when will I get sine power 4? Only when I square sine square. Isn't it? Sine square, the whole square will give me sine power 4. So in other words, what should I do? I should find f of s square. Now, which identity has f of s square? Only Parseval's identity. Is that clear? So that's why for the deduction, I went for Parseval's identity. So state Parseval's identity. And as usual, left inside, what should you do? Minus infinity to plus infinity is split as minus infinity to minus 1, minus 1 to 1, 1 to infinity. Because that is how f of x is defined. And you know the first and the third integrals become 0 because f of x is 0 there. Okay? So what have I done to the middle integral? Look at the third step. The middle integral, I've replaced f of x as 1 minus mod x. Because from minus 1 to plus 1, what is the value of f of x? 1 minus mod x, the whole square dx. Okay? Now right inside, Root of 2 by pi into 2, the whole square, I've taken all the constants out. So what is sine square, the whole square? It is sine power 4, s by 2, divided by s power 4, ds. So I've got the sine power 4 that I wanted. So all I have to do is do some minor adjustments, okay? Now listen carefully. This problem is slightly different now. Why? Because, see, the question says you have to find sine power 4, t. But what do you have here? You have sine power 4, s by 2. So I go for a substitution. I put s by 2 as t. So can you understand why I'm doing this? Because question, question, you're asked to find sine power 4 t, but I have only sine power 4 s by 2. Okay, so that's the reason I put s by 2 equal to t. Then ds by 2 will be dt. And what will happen to the new limits? When s is 0, t is 0. When s is infinity, t is infinity. So there are no changes in the limits. Okay, so I hope you understand why I went for that substitution in the right inside. Left inside is easy. Left inside minus 1 to plus 1. And I know 1 minus mod x is an even function. So how can I write minus 1 to plus 1 as twice 0 to 1? Okay. So have you understood this step so far? So look at the right hand side in the last step. I've got sine power 4 t by t power 4. So find the rest of it and automatically you will find. Okay. One more thing I want you to note. In the question, we are asked to find integral 0 to infinity sine power 4 t by t power 4. But what do I have in the last step? I have minus infinity to plus infinity. So what should you do here? I know sine power 4 t is even function. Sine is odd. But what is sine power 4? Odd power 4. Gives you even. So even function. T power 4 is also even. So right hand side is an even function. So how can I write minus infinity to plus infinity as twice 0 to infinity? That is what I've done. 
okay again left hand side i've i've done the same thing okay mod x see x lies between 0 to 1 so x is positive look at the left hand side so what is modulus of x it is x only okay this we already discussed so left hand side i've integrated how can you integrate 1 minus x the whole square 1 minus x the whole cube by 3 into the minus 1 why how did i get that minus 1 because i have 1 minus x okay so i have to divide by minus 1 so left hand left hand side i have integrated right hand side i used the fact that sin power 40 by t power 4 is an even function so i can write it as twice 0 to infinity okay so what i want you to do now is have 0 to infinity sin power 40 by t power 4 on one side bring all the other terms to the other side you automatically get pi by 3 to be the value of the integral so we have successfully found the value of the integral using parseval's identity this is very clear so how many problems are we done with two so we have just one more to go the last one okay are you ready so all the three problems i tell you again and again are very very important okay please don't miss working out all the three problems okay very often asked very often repeated questions in your question papers as well it's a favorite for the examiners so be thorough with all the three problems that we are doing now all right okay this is the third and the last so what are we asked to do here find the fourier transform of f of x equal to how is the function defined here it takes the value a square minus x square for modulus of x less than a it takes the value 0 for modulus of x greater than a fine and then here again how many deductions do we have two deductions so remember you have the choice you can use inversion formula you can use parseval's we'll come to that later for now first what should we do we have to find the fourier transform of this function now i'm going to go a little quickly because i'm running out of time fourier transform you know how to find right so let's quickly go through we're going to go through everything don't worry all right so first thing i'm going to find fourier transform now tell me what is mod x less than a it means minus a to plus a okay so f of x takes the value a square minus x square from minus a to plus a look at the second line f of x takes the value 0 for mod x greater than a so what is mod x greater than a it is minus infinity to minus a and a to infinity so in both these regions what is the value of f of x 0 okay now let's go ahead so as you know for your transform of f of x definition is f of f of x equal to 1 by root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of x e power i s x dx so how should you do the splitting now split minus infinity to plus infinity as minus infinity to minus a plus minus a to a plus a to infinity now you know in the first and the last integrals f of x value is 0 therefore they vanish so i am left only with the middle integral okay so i take the middle integral minus a to plus a substitute for f of x when x lies between minus a to plus a or in the first line where what is f of x a square minus x square so a square minus x square into what have i done with e power what should you do with e power i s x right write it as cos s x plus i sin s x fine so i've done that next you have to split it see it's a standard procedure nothing new once you write e power i s x as cos plus i sin split it into two multiply term by term so a square minus x square into cos plus i into a square minus x square into sin so that is what i've done in the next step okay now i will discuss odd and even function look at the first integral a square minus x square x square is even cos is even even into even gives you even now look at the second integral a square minus x square is even but what is sin sin is an odd function so even into odd gives you odd okay plus into minus is minus like that all right so the second integral vanishes so i have to find only the first and remember because it's an even function how can you write minus a to plus a as twice 0 to a that is what i've done next to evaluate this integral i've gone for bernoulli's bernoulli's is the best choice okay if you go for integration by parts here to evaluate this integral you have to use integration by parts two times only then you'll get the answer this is so easy okay so what is bernoulli's formula let's quickly recollect integral u dv is uv minus u dash v1 plus u double dash v2 minus etc okay so what is u here again choose u according to i late a square minus x square is algebraic function cos is the trigonometric function a comes before t so u is a square minus x square what is u dash first first differentiate first finish off the first column what is u dash differential of a square minus x square which is minus 2x what is u double dash differentiation of minus 2x which is minus 2 what is u triple dash it's zero because minus 2 is a constant when i differentiate a constant i'll get zero so i have till u double dash so look at bernoulli's formula how far should i find under v the formula says uv minus u dash v1 plus u double dash v2 
u triple dash onwards is zero so i can forget about the rest of the terms so i'll have to stop with v2 so under v i'll find till v2 do you understand the term that comes along with u double dash is v2 so i will go till v2 so what is v v is integral of dv integral of cos is sine divided by the constant s yes. what is v1 integral of v which is integral of sin x sin x integral of sin is minus cos so minus cos sx divided by s into the s that i already have which is s square similarly what is what, what is v2 v2 is integral of v1 what is integral of minus cos minus sin divided by another s so i get s cube have you understood so all you have to do now is use bernoulli's formula u into v look at the uh, connection that i've marked in yellow u into v minus u dash into v1 minus u uh, plus u double dash into v2 alternate plus and minus sign okay so i've simply used bernoulli's formula in the first step and i've substituted the limits that is all i've done and i've got the fourier transform of f of x please look look at that see how did i get the first term to be zero i've simply substituted the limits i'm sure you can understand this see a square when you substitute the upper limit a what is a square minus a square zero when you substitute the lower limit now what is sin 0 sin 0 is also 0 so the first term vanishes completely for both the upper and the lower limits i have substituted for the remaining terms okay for the lower for the remaining and i have taken the two common i have taken the two common i have substituted 0 a and 0 for the remaining two terms that is how i get that step okay so what is fourier transform of f of x it is 2 root of 2 by pi into sin as minus a cos as divided by s cube i have simply taken lcm that is all i have done okay now we have found the fourier transform of f of x that is f of s is found okay now how many deductions do we have two deductions so we have to decide where we have to use inversion formula where we have to use parcels now you are going to tell me okay now look at f of s look at the third step what do we have in f of s sin as minus as cos as by s cube so we basically have sin minus s uh, s cos s divided by s cube now look at the question look at the question look at the first first deduction sin t by t cos t by t cube now that's exactly what we have here sin as minus as cos as by s cube isn't it so how will you prove the first result you will use inversion formula so if you have exactly f of s in the integral simply go for inversion formula okay now look at the second result second result has the same term the whole square okay so i have f of s square which identity gives you f of s square parcels identity so for the first one i will use inversion formula for the second one i will use parcels identity okay that's exactly what i've done so it's again the same thing all over again okay so let's go for deductions to prove the first one i'm going to use inversion formula i stated inversion formula f of x is equal to 1 by root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity for your transform of f of x e power minus i s x d s this is inversion formula so you'll have to write d s and e power minus i s x please note okay all right next step i've simply substituted for for your transform of f of x okay so i've just simply substituted sin as minus as cos as by s cube and what have i done with e power minus i s x i've written it as cos s x minus i sin s x because what is e power minus i theta cos theta minus i sin theta okay then i have done term by term multiplication multiply sin as minus as cos as by s cube with cos and then multiply the same term with sin i split it into two integrals okay now you have to check which function is odd which function is even now the second function happen the second integral happens to be zero because it's an odd function the first integral is even first function is even how did you how did i find that by using the definition of odd and even function what else so for the first integral it's a big term right so don't get scared it's just that you have to use the definition of odd and even function just by looking at it i can't decide like how i normally do so i've checked it okay by definition so let me take the first function please listen carefully for the first integral what is the function sin as minus as cos as by s cube into cos sx so that is my function of s sorry that is my f of s okay so i found f of minus s now okay how did i find f of minus s in the first integral replace every s by minus s so sin a of minus s minus a into minus s into cos a of minus s uh, by minus s the whole cube into cos of minus s into x fine so replace every s by minus s that's how you get f of minus s and then what is sin of minus theta it is minus sin theta what is cos of minus theta it is cos theta so i have replaced 
and I have taken one minus sign out, okay, from the numerator, and I have cancelled it with a minus sign in the denominator. So what do I get? Sin a s minus a s cos a s divided by s cube into cos s x, which is exactly f of s. So for the first integral, f of minus s is the same as f of s. So what can you say about the first integral? In the first integral, the function is even. Similarly, I found for the second integral. Okay, I'm running out of time. So similarly, I found for the, I'm sorry, I'm found for the second integral. For the second integral, if you take the function and take uh, the function as f of s and find f of minus s, you're getting minus f of s. So the second integral, in the second integral, the function happens to be odd. That's how the first second integral becomes zero. Okay, now what happens to the first integral because it's an even function? Minus infinity to plus infinity becomes twice zero to infinity. Okay. So that's how I get this step. Now, look, you remember the question? You were asked to find sine t minus t cos t by t cube. So I don't need this a. One more thing, I don't need cos sx. Cos sx is an additional term that I have. So what should you do to make it vanish? You put x equal to zero. Okay? Like what we did for the first problem. I hope you remember. Put x equal to zero. I can give value for x because yes is the variable. D, yes. Yes is the variable. I can give value for x and for a. So I put x equal to zero so that cos zero becomes one, that term vanishes. And then what have I done? I put a equal to one because I don't need a, okay? So that's how I get sine s minus s cos s by s cube in the left-hand side equal to right-hand side, I will get five by four into, when I put x equal to zero, I'll get f of zero. Now, how do you find f of zero? See, zero lies where? Zero lies in minus a to plus a. What is f of x from minus a to plus a? It is a square minus x square. So what is f of zero? a square minus zero square, which is just a square. That is what is explained in the highlighted portion in the right. Okay, so f of zero is a square. That's why I substituted for f of zero. Okay, but when I put a equal to one, that a square also vanishes. Okay, so what's the value of the integral? Required integral, and, and then finally I've simply replaced s by t because the question has t in it. I've simply replaced s by t. So I've got the required integral, integral zero to infinity sine t minus t cos t by t cube is pi by four. So that's the first deduction, okay? Now the second deduction has the same integral, whole square. I have to find whole square. So which, which one gives you f of s square? Possible identity. So for the second deduction, I've gone for possible identity. So I've written the statement, okay? Left hand side, uh, how should you write minus infinity to plus infinity as? minus infinity to minus a, plus minus a to plus a, plus a to infinity, okay? And the first and the third integrals become zero because f of x is zero there. What happens to the middle integral? f of x is a square minus x square, isn't it? So the whole square, I'll get f of x square here. So a square minus x square, the whole square in the left, left hand side. Right hand side, I've simply substituted for f of s and I've, and I've squared it, okay? Now, Look at, please remember the objective. What is your aim? Your aim is to find integral zero to infinity sine t minus t cos t by t cube, the whole square. Okay, so what should you do now? You should put a equal to one because you don't need the a. So put a equal to one. Okay, so uh, I've brought the right hand side to the left hand side because this is what I'm going to find, isn't it? So I've simply replaced a by one. So I get integral minus infinity to plus infinity sine s minus s cos s by s cube, the whole square ds is equal to I've taken the 8 by pi to the other side. So pi by 8 into left hand side, I will get minus 1 to plus 1 because I'm replacing a by 1. Okay. So minus 1 to plus 1, 1 minus x square, the whole square dx. Okay. Now, how will you evaluate the right hand side? Minus 1 to plus 1. I have the integral in the form minus a to plus a. And I know x square is an even function. So because it's an even function, I can write this as twice 0 to 1. Okay. I can write this as twice 0 to 1. Uh, so and left hand side, see, the, the required integral has zero to infinity and I have minus infinity to plus infinity. So I'm going to check whether the left hand side is an even function, okay? So that's what I've done here and I found that it's an even function. Because the function is even, I have replaced left hand side minus infinity to plus infinity as twice zero to infinity. Right hand side, I have simply evaluated. Right hand side is also an even function. So that becomes twice zero to one. What is one minus x squared? The whole square. It is one minus two x squared plus x power 4, a minus b, the whole square formula, then I've simply integrated, okay? Right hand side, I've simply integrated, I've simplified, and I've got the answer. So please remember the objective. When you remember what you have to prove, you can make changes accordingly and arrive at the answer, okay? So don't think that it's this is too lengthy or anything. Usually these questions are asked as, you know, 16 mark questions. 
there will be no subdivision if you have to find fourier transform along with deductions it's usually asked as a full 16 mark question so don't feel lazy or don't feel uh, don't think that is too long uh, it has a value okay and all the three problems that we've covered today are really the most important problems so i want you to you know be thorough with all the problems that you've done so far and i and i hope that you found this session useful thank you for listening to me patiently thank you so much